Hey guys, Brian coming to you with some more Bomber Beta. Today we're talking about A2 and A4 pulley forces. I have this really cool study called the estimation of finger muscle tendon tensions and pulley forces during specific sport climbing gripping techniques. It's a study published in 2005 in the Journal of Biomechanics. And why does every climber in the world not read this study? I do not know, but I hope that you guys all do. And let's get into it. So the main point of this study is uh, talking about the difference between a crimped position and an open-handed position. So um, during a crimped position, uh, your pulleys are put under a lot of force. So as you can see here, um, I've labeled on my hand, uh, the A2 pulley is right here and the A4 pulley is right here. They're a ligament that wraps around your finger, holding your flexor tendons close to the bone. Um, while you do climbing specific activities. You can reduce the stress on your A2 pulley by going from this motion to this motion by on average 36 times. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. That's like, you know, going from 360 pounds down to 10 pounds. That's a lot. And then uh, we can reduce the t um, force on an A4 pulley by going from the crimp position to the open-handed position uh, by four times. So that's still a significant amount and it's something that if we want to be injury-free climbers we might want to think about doing. So to review this more thoroughly I'm going to put you guys on a tabletop view and we're going to go through this study page by page. Uh, really excited to see what you guys think. All right so looking at this study um, and you guys can uh, take a look at that um, all that good information there but you can see the claim here in the abstract that um, the, uh, you can get 36 times lower for the A2 in the sloping grip. So they call the sloping grip the open-handed grip and then the crimp grip, the full crimp or the closed grip. Um, and uh, four times lower in the A4 pulley. So that's really cool. And here they defined what they consider those where the this joint here has a um, flex of 90 to 100% whereas it only is about 50 to 70 percent uh, for the open-handed or sloping grip, which is pretty typical in how you would climb. This would be a crimp, this would be a sloper. Um, so going on to the next page, and you can see their um, diagram here that shows that crimp grip versus the sloping grip. Um, so how did they do this study? So they took uh, six expert climbers um, and they all uh, could on-site 13B. So these are very good climbers. Uh, I don't know if many of you guys have on-sited 13B, but that <clears throat> is pretty impressive. So, uh, and going into, they had a um, average age of 27. Um, their average height was 5'10", and their body weight was uh, 145 pounds. You can see a uh, metric system. Uh, is what they printed. I converted it uh, for the American audience. Uh, but so pretty typical. Uh, they didn't say if they were men or not, but it seems as though that would be a pretty average male climber at 5'10 and 145 pounds. So going on, uh, they had some stuff about uh, how they actually gauge the stuff. Uh, I don't think that's super important for us right now. And then they actually drew some types of uh, free body diagrams on this which is the biomechanics aspect of this so this is basically like a mechanics physics problem to determine uh, basically your forces that act on uh, that part of the muscle you can see here they've done a lot of stuff I don't think this is super critical for us but you guys can go check that out if you would like but the main point is what they've come up with so they have these two um, tendons which uh, run across through the, uh, the flexor tendon. So we have the one tendon that comes here and goes on the A2 pulley and the A4 pulley up to this, um, this last part of your finger. And, you know, full disclaimer, I am not uh, a biomechanic uh, person or a physiology person. 
or an anatomy person or anything like that. So I don't know every little name of all these different tendons and the different uh, jargon for all these things. But basically there's these two uh, flexor tendons. One only goes to here and the other comes to here. And you can see that um, there is a slight variation in the uh, forces um, determined in those crimson sloping grips. So we have here uh, the one being higher and I will annotate uh, what FDP means and FDS means because it's a very long name and I'll mispronounce it so I apologize there but um, so you can see here that in the crimp grip this one actually produces a higher force which is opposite for the uh, sloping grip. Now that they say that that's not significantly different given the I think they use the t-test there so but it might be something that you guys might be interested in doing. Uh, so just something to note there. Um, but the real one that we're concerned about is this table right here. You can see now the crimp um, grip for the A4 pulley, the mean force was 220 uh, and uh, newtons, and the sloping grip was 57.4, which is significantly lower. And we have a max here, let me maybe get pen here on number two. So that 197 to 19, we have a max difference of 10.4 uh, times different with this being on average around four times different. And then we have the A4 pulley where, uh, or excuse me, the A2 pulley, which is the one that is most commonly uh, injured in climbers. Remember in that, well, no, it's the other way remembering that the A4 pulley and the A2 pulley uh, look like that. So um, remembering that uh, the A2 pulley is uh, on average here, 254.8 with the crimp grip and 8.1 with the sloping grip, which if you could imagine, that's a significant drop uh, on average, they're saying 36 times different with a max of 92 times different with subject six. So that's going from 183, 100, essentially 184 down to only two. So they're basically going from a crimp grip where they're using probably most of their load is coming from the crimp grip or from their A2 and then reducing it to almost nothing. Um, two newtons is very low in comparison to almost 200 newtons. So that is a huge, huge change there. Um, now, uh, going on to this, we have their analysis where they talk about how it's 36 times lower in the sloping grip for the A2 and, and the forces acting on the A4 are four times lower. So what's a little bit of stuff to take into consideration here? Now, as you can see, there's only six subjects here. So there isn't really um, a large database here um, but we do see that in no case is uh, the crimp grip ever higher than the excuse me the crimp grip is never lower than the sloping grip so and, and that is something that I think is uh, maybe if we did this res this test with more subjects we might not run into the, uh, the same exact results but I think we would still point to it being higher than um, with the crimp grip as opposed to the sloping grip. And obviously the less force on those pulleys, the better, because that is the number one way to not be able to climb at all is to tear one of your pulleys. Now they did make a point here that, um, you know, this might be a good way to reduce your risk of injury, but it's not exactly uh, what happens during rock climbing and there might be other factors at play essentially. So, uh, just keep that in mind as well that sometimes you can't open hand like you can't open hand a sharp crimp like it just doesn't really work your fingers have to go into it so you end up closing your hand so sometimes you can't use an open grip but you know it's usually good now one th another thing to note is they did not take in effects of the a3 pulley um, and that being said, they don't actually know the forces on the A2 and A4 pulleys for the study. They used this biomechanical model that did all that crazy math and that physics stuff to end up getting the results that they did. So this is an estimation, but they feel as though that the A3 pulley is negligible 
um, compared to the A2 and A4 pulleys. And again, they are the experts at biomechanics, so I have to trust them to some degree in, in that. And you can see here that in conclusion, the forces of the pulleys are particularly lower in the sloping grip than in the crimp grip. So in conclusion, basically, if you want to reduce the forces on your pulley, if you're getting tweaks, if you've had injuries in the past, try to reduce closing your hand while crimping. Try to practice that open-handed grip, that sloping grip, and try to get that stronger in your climbing and get used to doing it like that. You know, to practice maybe three finger open, try and do maybe a half crimp where you're not quite closing it all the way. Like I have very short pinkies. Um, some people might have longer pinkies, so they might be able to do a full crimp even a little more open than I can. So practicing that, getting better at that, you might reduce your chance for injury um, up to 92 times in the A2 pulley. So something to, to look at. Um, I'll leave a link to this study uh, in the description below. Uh, if you guys like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and uh, I'll catch you later.